I owe you an apology. For putting Chris in charge of the business? No, for not consulting you first. Oh. Oh, come on, Kim. Who else could we trust to run everything while we're away? Perhaps if we discussed it before you made your unilateral decision, we could have come up with somebody All else. right, but what's done is done, and he is my son. Who's let you down in the past when you've trusted him with responsibility? Circumstances were different then. He tried to take everything over, Frank. We should have talked and you shouldn't have undermined my authority. You seem to have conveniently forgotten the role that you played in Christopher's attempted takeover. I was wrong to sell him the shares at the time. I've acknowledged that and apologised for that. This is different. And as you've been given a second chance, why shouldn't I give Chris the same? Because I'm your wife, Frank. You know what my future plans are. You don't know what Chris's intentions are. What's to stop him trying to take over again while we're away? Should be a lively meeting this afternoon. See you there. Come on, man. Shape yourself. We should be picking the keys up by now. I know what cottage looks like. I've been passing it for nigh on 50 years to get to Woolpack. But you've not been inside it, though. I have, you know. New Year's party, 1953. That's when Norman and Joyce Edgar had it. Norman could play William Tell Overture on spoons. And Joyce made finest rice pudding a man ever tasted. Then after that, Miss Ellis lived there. Till she went to look after the post office in Norton. She was a spinster all her life. When she did, they put on a gravestone. Here lies Miss Ellis, postmistress. Returned and open. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll have a pint of whatever she's had. I'll tell you later. Just time for a quick cup of, and then I'll get off and tow your van back. I'd better come with you, Jack. It's the least I can do. Good idea. Always best to have a second man when towing. Uh, could I come with you, Betty? Would you mind? Oh, would you? I'd be delighted. And I'd value your opinion on place better than any man's. Hi, how's it going? I haven't found anything to cheer about yet. When will you hear about your post? Oh, I'm going to give Andy Seymour a ring this morning. I hope we're doing the right thing. We've made the decision. Now, as long as we don't allow ourselves to have any doubts, it's the right one. Come on, Luke. The grown-ups are obviously feeling infallible again this morning. Again. Let's see if our lunches are wrapped in road maps. You're all set? Almost. How about you? Yeah, just about. I'm really looking forward to seeing Scarborough again. Good. It'll do you good. It always does. And you can look at the situation here from a distance. Yeah, that's what I thought. Put things in perspective. And the future can only get better for you, love. For all of us, I hope, Mum. Yeah. Including Alan. He's at the brewery today for the loan decision. He said I might not recognise the place when I get back. Well, if he gets the backing he needs. Actually, I wouldn't mind popping in, see how I got on. All right. And I've got to go to Nick's place, one or two things to pick up there. Mum, they do have shops in Scarborough, you know. I've seen them. You don't have to take everything with us. Listen to me, your mother knows best. It won't take long. <laughs> oh, this says it all, doesn't it? It needs a bit of decorating, but basically it's in good shape. No, no. I mean, these layers of wallpaper must tell a story, even represent a lie. Betty, that's so poignant. But true. <laughs> hey, Miss Ellis, do you think? Uh, it looks very spinster postmistressy. <laughs> <laughs> and this could be Joyce and Norman Edgar. A spoon player and rice pudding maker. <laughs> Do you think she ever told him off for using the spoons? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now we're back to warriors. Look, green stipple. What? Well, couldn't get wallpaper in war, so people used to stipple the walls. Ah, oh, it's been done with such care and attention. Perhaps a young married couple decorating together for the first time. Who knows? I like this place. I think it's got a good atmosphere. I think we'll take it. Now, these are the master keys. I cannot stress too highly the importance of them, so don't lend them to anybody or leave them lying around. They're totally your responsibility, David. Understood? Don't worry, Mrs. Tick. Can you rely on me? A keys for wine cellar on there as well. <laughs> Sorry. 
But as I've just one more thing for you to do. Wish us a happy honeymoon. <laughs> oh, all the best, Mrs. Yeah, yeah, have a good, really good one. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> now, you all know your responsibilities, and there's no reason why you can't carry them out. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right. Yeah. See ya. See ya. Where is it they're going? Hawaii. She's hardly going to be nipping back to check up on us, then, is she? Nick! Oh, sure who's in charge, though. He's the worst out of a lot of them. Hadn't you better get over to that cottage and see what Betty's up to? I know what she's up to. Only too well. She's after making townies on us. No, she isn't, Seth. She just wants you both to be comfortable. Anyway, I don't know what you're making a fuss about. You lived in Demdike Row for long enough. That weren't a main road. There'll be traffic careering past. People seeing all those comings and goings. How are happy living in this? This is not a long-term home. Not for anyone. Least of all, a couple of... Go on, say it. A couple of geriatrics. I wasn't going to say that, Seth. I was going to say a couple of your age and needs. The mouse the same thing. This caravan suits me. Fresh air. Good views. Get a good view of the wool pack if you moved into the cottage. And I might not like what I see. Turner gets his lawn and messes about with pub again. No, this, this will do for me. Come on, Charlie, we'll go for a constitutional. At least don't take my license off me to do that. Hello, Alan. Good to see you again. Oh, it's nice to be here. Can I offer you a drink? You've about 16 choices of product, plus tea or coffee. <laughs> no, thank you. Your secretary very kindly gave me a coffee while I was waiting. Straight to the point then, Alan. The wool pack. Could I ask you a personal question? Well, I'm asking you for a huge sum of money, so I suppose you're entitled to ask anything you like. <laughs> I know it's not long ago that you lost your wife, but... Do you have a partner at the moment? No. No, I don't. OK. That's not a problem. We're impressed with the proposed designs and the business plan. And with one or two provisos, we'll be offering you a loan. Well, thank you very much. What have you got next? Maths. And you? Biology. What's wrong with you? Look well, like you've just found out there's no Santa Claus. <laughs> Luke, we're in a mess and you're making stupid jokes. Look, what are we going to do? You don't want to leave here, I don't, so why should we have to? Well, we shouldn't have to. But Mum and Dad are determined to go, so what can we do? Well, we could stay here by ourselves. But we could do it, Luke. Yeah, right, with no home and no income. Look, I'm as keen as you to stay. I'd actually like a chance of passing my A-levels, but <laughs> we've got to be practical. Well, two guest beers is a fair limit. I, I, I find that no problem. Fine. Just one last suggestion. Far away. Consider the advantages of employing a manager to run the place. Possibly even a couple. I, I do assure you I'm quite capable of running my own establishment. Sir? The cottage will be perfect for us. I've told them we'll take it. Uh, subject to your agreement, of course. We don't need a rent at cottage when we've got a place of our own. I'm happy to stay here, thank you very much. Oh, don't be so awkward. You like it when you see it. I don't have to see it. And I thank Jack for his hospitality. And I'm saying the same to you and all, Sarah. And I'm quite content for us to live here. And that's that. It's our lunch break. It's not to do with you anyway. You're just here to serve us. We're getting the zone in, or what? Aye. Yeah. Pack a lager, please, sir. Yeah, same for me. Roll on payday. Aye, I hope she's sorted wages out before she goes away. Oh, no. Chris will be throwing us leftovers from top table. Hey, that's no way to talk about your brother-in-law. <laughs> really? And I suppose you'll want a pint of gut rot? Hey, I'm a customer. And as such, you shouldn't be speaking to me like that. Oh, oh shut up, David. Or I'll tell them what a change it is, you having friends I can actually see. Remember Mr Dibbs when you were about five? We had to put a plate out for him every mealtime. <laughs> <laughs> Mother! Oh, 
Remember, always treat a barmaid with respect. Especially when she knows things about you. Mm -hmm. Have a drink yourself, Mum. So what do you reckon to Chris, sir? Better or worse for us than Kim Tate? Oh, worse? He'll be trying to prove that he can run the estate. At least Kim doesn't have to do that, does she? Looks like it's going to be a long fortnight, then. Yeah. Yeah. It's what we make of it, isn't it? And I've got the keys to the kingdom. Yeah, and if there's one yeah. thing out of place, Dave, she's going to know it's your fault. I wasn't thinking of doing any harm. I was just thinking of treating ourselves to borrowing some of their top guns. I'm going shooting sometime. Hey, that's not a bad idea, actually. Mm. They've got some beautiful remittance. Mm. Might be good, that. Right. Hey, now you're not going to grass us up, are you? Being family and all. Look, my sister has the misfortune to be married to one of them. And now she's being driven out of the village because of him. Where's she going? When? Uh, Scarborough, today with Mum. How long for? I don't know. Has nature ever created a more stubborn creature than Seth Armstrong? <sighs> Just look at him. Depth of winter. And does he want to warm his feet in front of a roaring fire in a cosy cottage? <laughs> does he, Eck? He'd sooner see his cold breath fill the inside of a tin tent. He'll come round. Won't he? Well, I'm not going to hold my breath waiting. Oh, you two have been ever so good to us. But could I just ask you one more favour? Go ahead. Can I stay here for just one more night and I'll move into the cottage tomorrow? Of course, you can stay as long as you need to. He's late. Relax. Thomas may not be the most punctual of men, but he is the best company secretary we could have. Yeah, well, Thomas Molyneux should realise that he works for us and not the other way round. He works for the shareholders of Tate Holdings. I'll get it. Hello, Home Farm. Yes, yeah, she's just here. Hang on. Zoe, Emma Nightingale. Hello. Oh, that's wonderful news. Hello, Yes, I'd love to. Apologies. Straight held up due to squirrels putting nuts on the line. Just south of Peterborough. Good to see you, Thomas. You're looking very well, Frank. Marriage must suit you. You should try it yourself sometime. If only I had the time. Oh, I've just got back from Brussels. Now, there's an exciting place. But shall we get on? Emma's got the contract to redesign the Woolpack. Good. She must be pleased. Very. We're going out to celebrate tonight. Oh, I have finished it. What's oh, why? Oh, do you know? But if the brewery want you to appoint a manager, then they must be giving him some authority. So if he doesn't want me, well, what can you do about it? Jan, this is my pub. If you look at the name across the door, that'll confirm that. You're my employee. And that's the way it's going to stay as long as either of us want it to. Now, you go and look after the customers, and don't worry about management decisions. Good. Right, lads. I'm off. Yeah. Say goodbye to our Kathy and Mum before they go. Yeah, do us a favour, will you, Ben? But no one Mum knowing you're getting another round. Well, you got a bar for us? Mm. Hey, oh, Ben, go somewhere. Hey, you'll stay for another one, won't you, Nick? No, honestly. Oh, come. Ah, yeah, what the hell. I suppose we're ready for another hour or so, anyway. Are you all right? Well, it's just with Cathy going away and everything. I just hope it's not to do with anything I've said or done. I just think she's really great. <laughs> Dave, don't talk soft. Look, she just needs to get away for a few days. It's as simple as that. In short, Tate Holdings has ridden the recession reasonably well. With farm rents, the holiday village and the stables coming out on top. Yes. And the heritage farm is looking a bit grim. I hate to say it, Dad, but having Seth Armstrong dressed up as a yokel is no competition for mm. Alton Towers. Sadly not, no. But uh, I still think it's a big enough draw to persevere with. 
And we're doing our bit to preserve rare breeds. Yeah, like Seth Armstrong. <laughs> are we in business to make a profit or satisfy the friends of the earth and all that nonsense? That's not nonsense. Hopefully we can do both. But that comes under future plans. As we've heard about the past year, this might be an appropriate time to take a break before we discuss the year to come. <clears throat> I believe we're going to be neighbours. Who told you that? Betty. She's moving in, but I'm not living in a fishbowl where everybody knows your comings and goings. Give over. It's perfect. Desres Tradstone Cot, two bed, int WC, suit DIY nth. But, best of all, just look at that view. That's just a torment. They're shutting it down for refurbishment. That means they're doing it up again. All right, it may be closed, but you'll also be living next door to an off-licence. I'm living in a caravan. I don't need an off-licence. I'll be brewing my own. Beer? Applejack. What's that, then? It's like cider, is it? It makes cider seem as innocent as mother's milk. You've got a recipe. I've got an off-licence. Could we make money, do you think? Can ducks swim? Can't you afford tablecloths anymore? This'll pay for an awful lot of tableware. What is it? Plans for the Emmerdale Golf Club. It's what? When did we agree on this? Well, strictly speaking, we didn't, but it's a fine idea. And the work's already begun. I initiated it when we had to shift a lot of the topsoil in the aftermath of the crash. That was months and months ago. You've been working on it all this time without consulting us. There was no need to consult you. We thought you had enough problems to contend with. It just looks like we've been shifting and skimming topsoil. Did you know about this? No, but I've no objections to it. We thought the least said the better. I've got planning permission, but as nobody knows about it, then they can't object, can they? Sound business practice. Sharp practice going behind the board's back. The whole principle is wrong. How often have I said to you, to hell with the principle, it's the money? And where's the finance going to come from for this, then? It's all there in your annual report. We're borrowing 75,000 from the bank against a couple of old lodges on the estate, one of which will be converted to the clubhouse. Is it big enough? No, but uh, to avoid complications with planning permission, we're extending the existing building to over four times the size. Not for 75 grand. And what about the rest of the cost? There's further investment from another company. Which other company? A livery Company Limited. Who the hell are they? A company with enough capital to invest in a golf course. A quarter of a million. What was the name of that company you started about five years ago, Kim? A livery Company Limited. I'm not trying to hide the fact. Hang on. Let me get this absolutely straight. This is some of the money you got from my father's divorce settlement. It's my money, yes. Then why should it be loaned via your company? Now that you've remarried, why don't you just give it back? Chris, that isn't fair. Kim was given a just settlement at the time. She's now been good enough to invest it in a joint venture. A joint venture? Just what's the split on this? Tate Holdings and Livery Company will each own 50% of the golf course. Meaning Kim will own half and we three will own the other half? Yes, but decisions and policy will be decided on five equal votes. To hell with decisions and policy. Are the profits going to be split three ways or two? Two. A straight split between my company and Tate Holdings. This stinks. This is a sound business decision. You can't honestly expect Kim to repay her divorce settlement. This way she's putting her money back so we can all make a profit from it. If the golf club's successful, I am risking a large amount of capital. Which was Dad's to start off with and which you acquired because of your adultery. I hardly think you're in a position for those sort of comments. Maybe not, but I am in a position to ruin this scheme. And why would you want to do that? Five minutes ago, you didn't know anything about a golf course. Now, at least you own a sixth of it. Your dad's right. It's a real winner. You don't even have a right to be here. She has every right. She's a director. And I'm a major shareholder, and she doesn't even have a share. I mean, what is this? Have I become invisible or something since I've been confined to this thing? I mean, I may be disabled. I'm not bloody stupid. How come she has more of a say than I do? Tim doesn't. And you are a major shareholder. You're also going to be in charge of the whole shebang while I'm away. And as I've stuck my neck out to a point, you don't let me down by resorting to silly outbursts of petulance. 
A lot of the land that the golf course will cover is useless anyway. We'll have to have borrowed money to build on it or bring in another partner. This way it makes sense. And even if you get Zoe to support you, me, Thomas and Kim, as directors, would carry the vote. It's Tate land, Dad. Our land. She doesn't even have a right to any share Her in it. Her name is Kim Tate, Chris. And you'll treat my wife with respect. Look. Look. I agree with the golf course. But I do think that Chris is right. Dad should be an equal partner in Livery Company Limited. But that is between your father and Kim. Now, can we proceed with the agenda, please? Just miss them. Hi. Sorry I'm late. The meeting went on forever. That's all right. I've not been here long myself. Charming place. Is it one of yours? Actually, it is. <laughs> but I promise I didn't suggest it just to show off. And I promise you, the beloved wool pack won't end up looking like this. <laughs> beloved? Well, to some. I was measuring up in there one day, and an old bloke in a woolly hat virtually accused me of desecrating his home. That'll be Seth Armstrong, and it practically is his home. Anyway, congratulations on the design. Oh, thank you. Hardly a royal commission, though. I know my place. Oh, don't run yourself down. It must be really satisfying seeing your ideas come to life. Well... I must admit, it's a good feeling standing somewhere I've designed and hearing people making complimentary remarks about it. I only hope that happens in the wall pack. Oh, I'm sure it will. How long is the work going to take? Well, it's costed for ten days, so... Is that all? I told you, it's not the Sistine Chapel we're talking about. We've got to get on with it and move on. And will you be staying around while the work's done? <sighs> yes, fussing like a mother hen, making sure they stick to the design. <laughs> in Emmerdale? Yeah, I'm booked in at the Dale View. Emma, you'll hate it. Why, is it awful? You're a designer. It'd be like making Pavarotti share a dormitory with... Take that. <laughs> you must stay at our place. No, no, I couldn't impose on you. I insist. My dad and stepmother will be away on honeymoon. You'll be doing me a favour, keeping me company. No, really... Don't argue. We'll drink to it before we order food. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mum, Dad. I've got something I want to say to you. Yes, Jessica. I am to all intents and purposes an adult. More in the opinion of the rest of the world than my parents, granted. But uh, I'm old enough to know my own mind, and I think you should respect that. I'm not moving back to the south with you. I'm staying here in Emmerdale. Oh, look, really, do we have to go through this ritual? Now, you're coming back with us, and that's that. I'm not. I happen to be in love, and I'm old enough to know the real thing. What was his name? Danny? A year ago, when you told us you were old enough to get engaged. Let's stay calm, shall we? Calm? How can I stay calm when he treats me like a little kid? It isn't fair. I've made my decision I'm going to stick to it. I'm staying here in Emmerdale, and I'm going to live with Biff. <laughs> <laughs> 